Kyle's a member of the Operating Engineers Local 115 and a proud, proudly comes from a union construction family where his father is a retired pipe fitter and steam fitter out of UA 4088 in Edmonton. And his two brothers are electricians out of the IBEW Local 424. In his current role as CEO of his skill plan, Kyle focuses on developing strategies to improve the skills of workers in the construction industry through the building trades unions and the affiliated contractors. Please join me in welcoming Kyle Downey. Good morning, good morning everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here and uh, thank you Robert for the warm message and all your support as always. Um, and also a big thank you goes out to the CBTU Executive Board and Sean for this opportunity to present on our partnerships we have with Canada's building trades unions as well as the provincial building trade councils across Canada and, the, and a lot of the unions. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that we're gathered here today on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabeg people who have resided here for generations and have been the original caretakers of this land. And also, I got a few board members here today. I'd like to give a shout out to Lee Loftus, Sean Strickland, Bryn Burke, and Robert Kucherin, as well as a former board member, Ryan Cochran. So thanks for your support. So just a bit of background on skill plan. Um, we've been around for north of 30 years. Um, as Robert mentioned, we're a workforce development organization as part of the building trades. We develop a lot of products and tools and provide services to create more opportunities for people to get in and through their apprenticeship programs, as well as the workers for to be more productive and safe. We're based in Vancouver, that's where our roots are, uh, but we work right across Canada helping uh, the unions and the contractors and the members. And so think of us as your wing organization to really help out with success. And so speaking of supports, what I'd like to talk about today are some of the initiatives we have with CBTU and the Provincial Build Building Trade Councils and what we're doing to really impact and create a more diverse workforce and create higher success. Um, so, I always like to start this presentation uh, with this workforce development continuum because this is what we think about at skill plan. You know, what can we do? On the left hand side, there's the labor market pool. And so, a lot of these initiatives that we have in partnership with Canada's building trade unions as well as the provincial building trade councils, funded uh, uh, by ESDC mostly, but also Future Skills Centre in the industry. So, thank you very much for that. And on the left hand side is the workforce development pool. So, you know, what can we do to help support recruitment efforts in the industry? So how can we get, you know, the unions to kind of connect more collaboratively, um, virtually, um, to kind of pull in more underrepresented groups? In pre-apprenticeship programming, how can we fast track someone? So cognitively, if they're struggling, what can we do to make sure that they get into their apprenticeship program? And then once they're in apprenticeship training, you know, what can we do to help them get through block training as well as on the job and so forth? And so we mainly look at funding initiatives or um, get funding for initiatives around that continuum. And one of the first ones I want to talk about, Sean mentioned it yesterday, is the Construction Trades Hub. And this is a partnership initiative we have with CBTU and the Provincial Building Trade Councils. There's a QR code uh, in case you see on some of the slides. Feel free to scan. As I'm presenting, you'll give me some background on, on some of the stuff I'm talking about. But really, what the virtual recruitment project is, it's really creating microsites or construction trades hub across Canada where people have the opportunity to learn about the trades. You know, a lot of folks um, that are thinking about getting in the construction industry, they think about the you know, typical occupations, electrician, plumber, and so forth. A lot of times, maybe they might not know what a glazer is and so forth. So, this is an opportunity for people to go to these microsites that are regionalized um, for people to really understand the trades from each province. And the really neat thing is, um, related to this, people can go there, learn about all the opportunities from the recruitment perspective, they can do uh, some pre-apprenticeship upgrading, um, they can get support and get connected to union jobs and opportunities. And these microsites are all connected. So if someone's in Ontario that's thinking about being a crane operator but wants to move to BC because you 
he or she loves the Vancouver Canucks, like some of you here maybe, I don't know, eh? Well, there you go, we got some claps. Um, they can connect virtually from the microsite in Ontario all the way to Vancouver and get connected to local 115. So we're trying to create this online cohesive system that allows people to learn about the trades but connect to opportunities as well. And so, as I mentioned, you know, the, the first part of the, the Construction Trades Hub is really about this explore opportunity. So we worked with the Provincial Building Trade Councils as well as the JATCs and unions in the regions to kind of figure out, okay, well, what does that trade mean for that region? You know, in some regions, how much do you get paid? What are the entrance requirements? And so forth. And so we worked with the regions, we shot a lot of videos, Day in the Life of the Workers, for people to really kind of get an idea to understand what each individual trade is. There are trade pages there that people can go to to learn about the trades. And so it really makes a difference for kind of removing some of those barriers that are put in place that people just don't have an understanding about the trades. So the first section is really that explore. Uh, just as a heads up, um, I recommend you guys going and checking out uh, your trade pages. Um, if you see some videos there that you like um, and you want to kind of utilize them within your union or your JATC pages, feel free to reach out to us. We will share those videos with you. There are some great videos. And just a shout out with respect to videos, uh, I just want to thank a lot of the JATCs and unions as well as uh, the contractors that allow us to go to the job sites or the union training schools to shoot these videos. It's, it's the building trade workers that are representing uh, these trades in a very contextualized. So the other thing from there, you can go from learning about the trade, but the next big thing is, do you have the smarts to get in? And so we spent a lot of time at Skill Plan developing cognitive profiles. So what are the key smarts required to enter uh, a particular trade? And, and then from that, from that cognitive profile, we developed assessments, we've aligned contextualized resources with respect to every trade. So people can go and get assessed in mathematics, reading, document use, science, thinking skills, aligned to that trade to know whether or not they have the skills to get in. A lot of JATCs across Canada are using that online resource we've integrated in into their system for them to actually help screen people, um, to identify people that need some more support so that when they get in, kind of they've done their push-ups and they're ready to start their apprenticeship program. So just think of that Build Your Skills Learning Hub as pre-apprenticeship support, but also once they're in the system in the apprenticeship program, we have block training support. So we worked with a lot of the JATC instructors, uh, subject matter expert, and we asked the question, hey, what do they struggle with in block training, and what can we do to develop resources to help them out? Um, it's, it's hard to have tutors all the time for apprentices, so can we automate this? And so what we've done is created thousands of videos and animations for particular areas that people struggle with in their trade. So our goal is in the next five years to have these resources for 60 construction trades. We want to have it for all the animations, videos, and areas that they struggle. Um, but we do have a lot of trades up there right now, probably roughly about 20. And so if you think about it, um, back to um, um, crane operators, I gave that example, Ontario to BC. So imagine there's a crane operator that's in the apprenticeship program. One area that a lot struggle with is load calculation. So they can actually go to the Build Your Skills Learning Hub and then they can find the crane operator page, they could find the activities related to load calculation, they could watch an animation, a video tutorial to help them understand that. So we did that with a, a lot of the trades across Canada working with the JTC instructors and we're seeing great results. And so I uh, recommend you guys taking a look at that. Um, in the next few years, we're gonna shoot a few thousand more videos and animation working with you in areas that they struggle with in block training. So how do we know that this works? Well, in 2019, uh, we started to, uh, you know, kind of contextualizing and bringing all these resources together. And then COVID hit. Well, there's some blessings in disguise related to COVID. One was the embracing of technology. And so we really kind of put all these resources and all these tools in an interactive online learning management system. And as you can see now, there's over 20,000 building trade apprentices and pre-apprentices in the system. And so we're on to something. 
The workers are going there uh, to get the support they need when they're struggling in block training. Um, in the pre-apprenticeship programming, they're going there to kind of get ready to walk in, sorry, to walk in that apprenticeship program. Um, Sean mentioned yesterday um, that there was north of 1,000 people signing up every week. Um, we're projected probably by the end of the year to have about 50,000 um, pre-apprentices and apprentices in the system. So it's quite significant. And this is to help your members here. And so just to give you an idea on the demographics, um, on the pre-apprenticeship side, there's roughly about 45% of the current uh, roughly 20,000 people. In the apprenticeship side, 34%. Journey workers, 18%. Instructors, 3%. That's still a high number, because remember, that's 20,000 people, 3% of uh, 20,000. But the makeup of the groups of underrepresented, youth make up 50%, so that's uh, 29 and under, roughly. Racialized, 38%. People that identify that they have a learning disability, like dyslexia, whatever it may be, roughly about 36%. Newcomers, 29%. Women, 23%. Indigenous, 10%. So there's a lot of underrepresented people coming. So on the, think about this on the pre-apprenticeship side. We got these construction trade hubs across Canada, and right now there's roughly 45% people in this hub that are interested in joining the unions. And they have a trade that they're thinking of, They've looked at these resources. They are trying to address their gaps so that they can get in. So right now, there's roughly, I'd say, 9,000 people that are interested in getting into union job and opportunities. In a year's time, we could have 50,000. Um, that's 25,000 potentially interested people that want to get into the trades and opportunities. So I, we see this collectively, CBTU and the Provincial Building Trade Councils, as a great recruitment tool to help people get in, and then that supportive tool as well. A couple other things I want to highlight just related to the uh, Construction Trades Hub or the Learning Hub. Um, we have a lot of short courses a lot of you are familiar with. Um, a lot of uh, the JATCs, union contractors and owners are actually implementing some of these short courses. Um, whether it's uh, site orientation or uh, giving it out to the apprentices to help them out and they're, you know, preparing for the Red Seal. So we got stuff like Red Seal Review, Test Anxiety Support, um, that's a very important one. Uh, financial awareness. We built an online interactive financial awareness course for these new apprentices coming in, making a lot of money and wanting to buy that $100,000 truck and everything else. So what can you do to plan around that? But also, what does a pension mean? And planning for the future around that. Definitely recommend checking that out. We got stuff on mental health and well-being, EDI, mentorship and Indigenous awareness. I just want to highlight a couple of the short courses uh, quickly. Uh, you guys are very much aware of the mentorship program that we have. Um, you know, roughly there are two, two ways it's delivered. One is an online one, roughly two to three hours. Uh, we worked with uh, CBTU and In the Trades. That was utilized in the In the Trades Apprenticeship Services Program. A lot of the contractors and unions passed it on to their members to utilize. There's also a face-to-face -face workshop. It's a little bit more intensive, train the trainer. Um, to get them ready to, to teach how to be a mentor and mentee to their apprentices and journeys. We've had in the last five years 20,000 workers go through this program. We were very fortunate we had funding from ESDC and the industry to, to do a return on investment study. And roughly about 2,000 building trade workers representing 30 contractors across Canada and ICI construction participated in this. And there were some really interesting uh, results. I've, I have an hour presentation that I've done to uh, some of the locals here and uh, some of the other conferences. So if you're interested in kind of hearing the details of it, just reach out to me. We'll send you that report. Um, but here's what the mentors and the supervisors were saying about the apprentices. These are some highlights uh, when they had structured mentorship programming. There's a 12.1% increase in them using the proper use of PPE a 35.7% increase in task efficiency. Again, this is a third-party research firm that did it, and this is the perspective of the mentor and the supervisor on the apprentice. 15.6% uh, reduction in rework, the quality of work got better. 9.2% reduction in complacency, they were more energized. Here's an interesting one. 44% increase in mentors, mentors giving more challenging tasks to the apprentice. That's saying that that mentor 
um, has confidence in that apprentice, that apprentice is learning quicker, the relationship is stronger, and so that's why you see a 25% increase in satisfaction. You know, we talk about retention sometimes at conferences. This is helping out with retention. And I know one thing, one of the gentlemen, I think he was in the middle of that panel earlier today, he was talking about increasing competencies quicker. Well, we have data that shows that good mentoring will do that. So recommend you guys checking that out. Um, we, we're pretty creative. We have funding that helps support with implementing it. The last thing I want to highlight is the newest uh, online program in partnership with CBTU. And thank you, CBTU, for allowing us to be part of this initiative. And this is the Online Indigenous Awareness course, course. And so this new online course in collaboration with CBTU, the Indigenous leaders, as well as building trades, contractors, and other organizations, really provides participants with the knowledge and skills uh, to participate in reconciliation and contribute to a more positive and supportive work environment. And I want to give a big shout out. Uh, I see him over there, Mr. Lyle Daniels. So a quick round of applause. <laughs> One of the big brains behind the program, the subject matter experts, also a diehard Edmonton Oilers fan. Um, so just, just so you know for trivia. And uh, you know, CBTU and, and Lyle and the other subject, subject matter experts originally d designed this course as a face-to-face -face course. And I believe over about 400 building trade leaders uh, received this training through CBTU. But the big question CBTU had was, well, how, how are we going to scale this? How are we going to get it out to all the members? And so that's when CBTU made the decision to develop this online course and asked us to partner with them. And, you know, we developed collectively uh, through subject matter experts, CBTU and skill plan, this online course. And so just a bit of background on this course, um, two to three hours in duration. Um, the topics really help increase the understanding of the history and culture of Indigenous people. And it fosters workplaces that are more supportive for Indigenous tradespeople. It prepares participants with career development tools to enhance relationship building with Indigenous co-workers, employees, and communities. It really enhances recruitment and retention of Indigenous workers in the skilled trades. There's a lot of videos here. And one more shout out to uh, Lyle. We have an avatar of him. So if you want to see his avatar, check out the course. So just related to this Indigenous training that we know we hope goes out to all the members, you know, as we continue to work towards reconciliation, we hope that this Indigenous Awareness course supports with fostering more respect, enhancing cultural under understanding, and driving change to transform the workplace culture. There's a QR code here. I definitely recommend you checking this out. And uh, lastly, uh, just before I wrap up, I just want to thank again CBTU Executive and Sean for this opportunity to present on these partnership initiatives we have. We're here to support the unions, the members, and the contractors. I'm here all day today and tomorrow, so please feel free to corner me or, or reach out. And I just want to say thank you so much for your support. We're now going to sh uh, show a promotional video for the Indigenous Awareness Course. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Being in the construction industry, I have heard every stereotype as far as uh, views on the Indigenous peoples of, uh, of Turtle Island. These meetings that we've had lately are going to pave the way to get those stereotypes, you know, squashed. We need to work side by side as non-Indigenous and Indigenous people, brothers and sisters, working beside each other. This training is important for you to realize that there's still a group that's underrepresented. And the only way we can change is through, first of all, education, but also through an opportunity for people to realize the struggles and some of the things that our, our, our people are going through. We have this opportunity, and I, I feel like it's a responsibility that we educate ourselves and continue to evolve as people to, to do a better job of just treating other people around us with kindness and respect. For our part at Canada's Building Trades Unions, we've been engaged with Indigenous populations for a long time. And many of our members are from Indigenous communities, and so this journey of reconciliation is important to us, as it should be important for every Canadian. We are focusing on ensuring that we develop opportunities for Indigenous young people and Indigenous people all around. 
It's one thing to get them ready. It's another thing to get industry ready. And that's the whole purpose behind doing Indigenous awareness training is whoever is working, whoever is going to be working with our young people and with our Indigenous people, they need to know the background of who they are need to know some of the barriers that our, our, our people go through, but more so, they need to prepare not only themselves, but also the workplace to ensure it's safe, it's respectful, and they have an opportunity to feel like they belong there. As we continue to work towards reconciliation, you know, we hope that this Indigenous Awareness course helps to foster greater respect, enhance cultural understanding, and drive change to transform the workplace culture. Having these types of trainings allows us to do that. We're presenting this, this piece, this little glimpse into a community to be able to learn, to have some of those questions answered that you might not feel uh, safe asking or you might feel too embarrassed to ask. We're presenting the information for people to learn and hopefully have interactions with those communities in a good way. This is a jumping off point, this is not the end. This is a point of entry to learn some of the basics and misconceptions about our community and it gives us this opportunity to just become better people. We are then able, able to uh, give that feeling and that safe workplace that Indigenous people can enjoy working at. To me is very important because it's gonna get the truth out there about our culture, our truths, you are that stone in the water, the ripple effect, to build, to create, to affect. Thank you, and thank you very much to Kyle and Skill Plan. That is a tremendous partnership that that Canada's Building Trades Unions has with Skill Plan, and many of our affiliates in the room have that partnership as well. And we know that we invest a lot in training. We have over 200 training centers from coast to coast to coast, and through our Joint Apprenticeship Training Trust, we manage those training centers. We have UTIP support to, to help with some of our funding for the capital requirements of those training centers. And training, as you all know, is in our DNA. That is the union advantage, and that is something that we have been doing for hundreds of years, in some cases thousands of years, when the trade guilds of Europe and, and uh, ancient civilizations were first formed. So we need help with that work. Uh, we have many of the answers, but not all of the answers, and so we need help with that work. And that's why Skill Plan plays a very important role in, in helping us to support our apprentices through their journey. And as you know, in many cases, we can get an apprentice in, but how do we keep them in? How do we keep them engaged? How do we find out what kind of support they need to have a successful journey to a journey person? So thank you, Kyle, and thank you to Skill Plan for your great partnership. We really appreciate that.